Today I am intending to address an issue that Raila Molodinga has called the third liberation of Kenya. I do not know how successful the past liberations have always been. I do not even know he has liberated Kenyans from anything since he began his liberation agenda. But I want to say a few things here. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. I know there are very many bloggers that have been set out there to troll me. Whatever I release out to the social media or wherever, my intention is never to win the argument. My intention, however, is to let out the truth so that we can set ourselves free. Raila Odinga has told us that he's fighting corruption in the Ruto government. I want to remind him that corruption is seated right at his doorstep in his ODM party. The largest business in Luoland, a business that its last balance sheet showed that it is worth 10 billion, yet it does not even have a proper headquarters. Because his intention is that if he goes, he goes with the party. I want to let you know, and the Luos in general, that political parties are public entities with perpetual existence. And that explains why they are financed by the exchequer, because they are public entities. But you have made the Luo youth believe that a political party is a personal property. This is one party where the chairperson of the National Election Board also nominates herself when it's the one who is supposed to determine who gets nominated. Nothing can be a better example of conflict of interest. You have told us you are fighting for equity. My big brother, you are the one only rewards people you have historical relationship with. Like the Opio Wandais, like the Kajuans, like the people of Sakwa from Migori County. Today, Migori County has only one MP who is an MP of his own native people, and that is the Nyatike MP. Because you must reward the people who originated from Siaya. My brother, nothing can be a better example of nepotism. You, you talk about equity. One friend of yours in the name of Junet Mohammed was made the minority whip. The same Junet was director of elections and a candidate at the same time. The same Junette was the master of ceremonies in all your functions. The same Junette was the secretary to Azimio Council. And many more that are never mentioned. What happens to the very Lewis who die in the streets fighting for you when you can import Junette from Mandera to come and colonize a constituency for 20 years? No. We say no. The country was divided in 290 constituencies so that a people can always elect their own leader in their own constituency, not imported ones. You have told us you want to reform IEBC and the judiciary. Nothing needs more reforms than your own national election board. And nothing needs reform like your own conflict resolution system in ODM, not the judiciary. In any case, what has the magistrates caught in Oyugis, in Karatina, in Mandera, or anywhere else done to warrant any form of reforms? We have reformed institutions in this country for far too long. Probably I know you meant the Supreme Court. Nevertheless, as a layman, I listen to the submissions in the Supreme Court by your lawyers. And I believe whatever they were saying had no evidence. They made very beautiful statements. 
Statements that made your supporters cheer them. Statements that made you hug them at the end of it. But you did not notice all those beautiful statements. There was no evidence to show that they were true. My big brother. You have told us how the Ruto government is persecuting people. You, and you singled out Kinoti. I do not know whether Kinoti is guilty or innocent. I have no mechanism of knowing. But you, as a friend of the then president, his brother, and also the head of opposition, you need to tell us why you kept quiet when SSU was throwing bodies in Rivayala and who are these bodies being thrown in Rivayala. Otherwise, you will believe these bodies were being thrown because they were on your way to be president. You are probably the reason why the Kenyan's currency was changed. Recently, you went to Homer Bay County to launch a postal mail. And during the launch, you made a statement that there is one person in that county, Anabueka Kamaumbwa, a bone will be thrown to him and will be quiet. Whoever that was, we still want to ask you why you kept quiet from the 9th of March 2018 until the Supreme Court threw your case out and affirmed Ruto's win. That is when you realize that you should be talking as an opposition leader. What bone was thrown at you to keep quiet throughout that period when Kenyans suffer? Over the years, you have ensured that anybody who raises his head, especially within Luland, to tell you the truth, to remind you of your mistakes, to remind you of your lies, is being cut down to size politically. It is time the battle will be on until your hegemony on these people, in which you never see any good leader rising, which you never see any brilliant sign of the Luo raising his head, in which you fight every strong politician in Luland, must stop. The reason why you never want any Luo to work with the government of the day, because you know very well a government is the, is the, is the greatest employer and the greatest business partner, and that would empower somebody to challenge you for the leadership of the people, to be seen by the people as bringing home development. We will tell you the truth. And if they are not going to join me to tell you the truth, I will tell it to you until it is engraved in the people, in me and in you. Because it is the truth that will set us free of your mind colonization. You attend functions, but you will never attend any function if you are not induced by the host. In fact, you will never attend any function which is a fundraising. You will attend funerals, political gatherings, and make all those statements, and never talk about development. And even if you do, it's not worth mentioning. My big brother, it is time the Luo started nurturing young men to one day carry the flag of the community. President Daniel Arab Moy gave William Ruto, a young man, the opportunity. In 1997, he ran as a parliamentary candidate. You ran as a president. It is ironical that he came to beat you on his first time attempt at the presidency as you are going for the fifth time. Yet you have made the Luo youth believe that you are the greatest politician ever created that can achieve anything with nothing. Please, these lies must go. We must say the truth. Even if it is going to cost us what? Even a life is not too big to pay for such a freedom. The Luos have grown from bad to us. In 1963, the Luos were the most educated. Today they are nowhere.
Recently, Jim Sorenko told the Luo youth that he will be president before 2027. That is a senior counsel, a man respected, a man who is also referred to as walking constitution. How have you bewitched our people? Your own sister went on the podium to tell us that this government is going to collapse and you are going to take over. Why are these statements when you know they are lies and you never come out to say they are no? Because you still want to keep the law in a box so that you use them for bargain in 2027. And let me also remind Kalonzo. Kalonzo Musioka, please. Rail Odinga is not going to support you in 2027. And it is simple because the Luos will be auctioned to the highest bidder. And I doubt if your intention is to be the highest bidder. You believe you have supported Raila enough for him to support you. If you doubt me, ask the child. When President Kibaki came to Kisumu, in his last term, James Orengo told him, Arudishi Mukono, Alizema, Ailo denga alijua vile tulifanya. Atafanya tu. That statement is loaded. Very, very loaded. We must free the Luo. I am ready to do it. I was designed for war and built for battle. I want to ask Railo Dinga to get out of the highway to prosperity of the Luo. He's creating jam on that highway. We are not asking you to endorse anyone. We are asking you to stop inciting the people against upcoming leaders because you want to remain the leaders for the sole purpose of using the Luo votes for your personal interest. The political party's funding comes entirely because the Luo vote unanimously for DM. What do they get from it? Today you are told political parties has awarded ODM 388 million. How is this going to help the Luo? The balance sheet of ODM party, the largest business in Luo Nyanza, is 10 billion. How has the Luo benefited from this? We have several counties in Luland, four to be precise. You ensured that you determined by yourself who becomes the governor by giving direct tickets and the Luo follow. Then they determine who becomes the MCS. Then you went and installed compliant speakers. Then what is are we expecting? We are expecting that now you are in full control of those county governments. Something tantamount to secession. But we know it is not secession. You want to, be, to, to benefit economically from those counties. Railo Dinga, you have had enough at the helm of the Luo community. You have made the Luo who were born yesterday think you are the only one who can lead the community. Because you never give anybody else an opportunity to lead it. An opportunity to say something that can show is a good leader for the community. You choose the weakest leaders from the land. It is shocking that you have stuck on people like Opeya Wandai, on Junet Mohammed. It is shocking. Why do you stick to certain people with which you have historical relationships. And because the Luo keep on hoping that you are bringing home the presidency, they don't want to disturb you, even if you step on their feet, even if you gag them from saying anything. We will not let you. I personally will not let you. It doesn't matter what is going to cost me. I know you don't know. My own grandfather died in the course of such a battle. My father too did. My late brother engineer Peter Wedi too did. 
And you know what he did for you that he had to lose his life. And Kenyans don't know. You never liked him. Because he was a man who was built for battle. He was a man who was ready to face off with anyone who infringed on the rights of the Lua. Probably you did know there was one left. Please, Raila Molodinga, set the Luo free. Free the highway to the Luo development and prosperity. The jam is choking. These people need to work with the government of the day. They need to be part of Kenya. And stop telling Kenyans, stop telling the Luo that they should have been incorporated in government because they also vote. Because they also pay taxes. We pay taxes to get services and we already do. President William Ruto is going to launch 5,000 houses in Omabe and roads. Those are the services for which we pay taxes. For opportunities in government, that is voting. We did not vote for William Ruto. Anything he gives us is out of benevolence. Anything he gives us is out of a good heart. A good heart that you have never possessed. We will succeed. We shall overcome. But my brothers and sisters, for my fellow Lewis, read Galatians chapter 3 verse 1 only. Good night, everyone. May God bless the Lord.